Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of the Dan Dawson Show. So, this is a follow-up to the young lady that was raped on the subway or the train in Philadelphia. Um, one of the private messages I got was, well, have you ever stepped into a situation like this? Yes, I have. Actually, on several occasions. So far, I used to work. I'm not going to mention any names. On almost a daily basis, um, men would step up the challenge, female um, workers. Well, one of the things you have to be aware of as a male on the floor is you have to get in between that situation. So that was on almost a daily basis. And even in uh, civilian life, I'll tell you a story. I had this friend, Deanna. Uh, we had joked around about dating and stuff like this, and this was a while ago. One day, I just happened to pull into a parking lot to go into a store, liquor store, to get some Jack Daniels. God bless Jack Daniels. Twice as cheap down here in Texas, I might add. So, but this guy had his bicycle in her car door. In her car door. So she couldn't close her door. So she couldn't drive away. And she was parked front end of course. And so I jump out of my uh, Cadillac. Walk around. I'm like. Hey baby what you doing here? I didn't know you were coming to the liquor store. I just gave you some money to buy me something. And she immediately starts smiling. Because she knows what's going on. And he starts trying to back out. And so I grab him right by the arm. And I'm like hey what's going on? Who are you? What you done? And he immediately starts to try to ride away. And I'm like, yeah, you probably need to leave. But she was thankful. Um, I've been in bar situations where I see a woman being harassed. And this actually happened at the Oak Tree in uh, Lakewood, Washington. And I'll go sit down beside her. And. This was a blonde chick. She had no idea who I was. But I sat down beside her and I was like, hey, honey, what's going on? And the guy immediately turns tail. And she's thankful. As a matter of fact, she brought me a Jack and Coke. So yeah, I've been in those situations because that's, understand, that's what a man is supposed to do. So now that we've got that out the way, let me tell you a ghost story. But with it being October and everything. So, yeah, I've been in those situations. So, I remember when we were kids, very young. Keep in mind, I'm almost 50 now. My big mama made my mother's mother. Um, my grandpa would. Me and my older brother, Jonathan. My little sister, Sandra. Me and Jonathan... When we were down at Big Mama's, Big Mama May's house, we used to chase tarantulas and we take wood bowls and just slap it down over them. It causes a concussion, right? And then when they die, you use them as handballs. It's really crazy, right? Anyway, parents were down there. This one night, we're all just sitting around, just sitting around on her porch, and. Mom and Daddy said they were going to a garage sale. Daddy wanted a new coat or something, or Mama wanted a new dress or whatever, right? And Big Mama May, to this day, I will not ever, ever, ever buy clothes from a garage sale. Ever. Here's why. My grandpa would... Um, and the beautiful thing about my grandpa Wood, he's a great man, great man. Loved him to death. Um, because with him, so my mother was his stepdaughter, and so we were his stepkids. But you could not tell the difference between his kids, his step grandkids. You couldn't tell the difference from his kids, his stepkids, his stepkids. Grandkids and his step grandkids. He treated everybody the same. He was just a great man. They don't make men like that anymore. Really great man. Loved him. Loved him. 
Um, still to this day, I mourn that he's passed. But great man. I think he really, if the younger generations, if he had lived long enough to teach them, would, would be great. I think he missed his calling as a teacher and as a leader. But we're sitting on the porch one night. And we're getting ready to go. And mom and daddy say they're going to a garage sale. Well, big mama May goes, don't ever buy clothes at a garage sale. And daddy starts laughing. He's like, ah, uh, why? And big mama May starts to tell this story. Her and grandpa Wood went to a garage sale. And they bought, uh, or grandpa loved long jackets, long coats. I have that same affinity. But he bought this long trench coat. And so she said, when they bought it, um, the lady said her husband had passed and she was selling the stuff. And the lady goes, this was my husband's favorite coat. He wore it all the time. You know, they had a ranch. Um, he would go out and tend the cattle. Riding his horse, and this is the coat he wore, wore it all the time. His favorite coat, right? And I'm watching my grandpa. My grandpa, usually when my big mama would tell us ghost stories, <laughs> right? <laughs> grandpa would laugh and just go along with it, right? The um, But this one, he started sweating. He starts rubbing at his head. And anybody that knows me in real life, you know if... I'm stressed or if I'm nervous, I start rubbing my head. I like to think I got that from him. So he starts sweating. He starts rubbing his head in this Texas around Christmas time. So it's a nice, cool 60 degrees, right? There's no reason to be sweating. And so she says they bought the coat. Grandpa hung it up in the closet. And she said that night, they're sitting outside and they see a light. Now keep in mind, they live in the country in Burton, Texas, or they lived in Burton, Texas. There's nobody around. And she said they saw a lantern, what they thought was a lantern, and it's coming across the field. And she goes, who's coming this time of night across the field? And she said, Grandpa Wood told her, that's not the crazy part. He goes, why aren't they jumping the fences? And so as the light gets closer, um, they realize it's not a lantern, it's just a ball of light. And so my big mama man, Grandpa Wood's house was set up to where you could enter their bedroom from the porch. And so the light goes into their bedroom. Grandpa runs in, he kept a shotgun above his uh, ma or his mantle, right? He grabs his 12 gauge. The light had went in the closet. He opened the closet. There was nothing there. No light. And the coat was gone. Hey, you can believe this or not. I believed it merely because of the way my grandpa reacted to it. He was a very serious man. He didn't take on for any of the bullshit. Very serious. Um, and it just kind of always struck me as this story is true. Mainly be a big part of it is because grandpa looked at big mama man. He goes, Maybell, never tell that story again. So that's just a little, have I been in situations like the Philadelphia training people? Yes. Have I reacted to it? I did the man thing, but I'm a whole different generation and there's a ghost story in there for you. So like, subscribe, share, and as always, do what you got to do.